Right, well, welcome everybody uh, to the, this session of Dorset Council joining the Global Purple Light Up com, uh, conversation. Uh, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Pete Bartlett. I am the co-lead for Dorset Council's Disability Employee Network. Hi there, I'm Izzy. I'm autistic and also co-lead with Pete, Dorset Council's Employee Network. Hi everybody, and my name is Matt and I am Chief Executive of Dorset Council. Brilliant, Matt, great to have you here. Uh, sorry, everybody, I have to sit quite close to the screen because I'm registered blind. So uh, apologies, you might see my forehead, but um, Matt, uh, I just wanted to, to ask you, why have we chosen to get involved uh, with the, the Purple Light Up campaign? Thanks, Pete. And uh, it's a very nice forehead you've got, to be fair. But um, uh, I think uh, one of the reasons why we've chosen to get involved, because we recognise the importance of our disabled employees to the organisation. And, and you know, we acknowledge that there's uh, an economic, social and cultural impact that uh, those colleagues can have. And we're proud of our disabled employees. Um, we've got disability confidence status here in Dorset Council. Um, and because we understand that disabled people are twice as likely to be unemployed as non-disabled people, at the same time as having a higher cost of living, it's really important that we do our bit uh, as part of that because that inequity in our society I think needs to be addressed and I'm proud of what Dorset Council is, is doing uh, where we are now. We know there's still more to do um, but that's part of why we've joined in here as well. So whilst 20% of Dorset's residents are disabled we've got a lower level of disabled employees represented within the organisation and we want to close the gap on that. Being part of this global event showcases you know for me how serious we are about achieving that goal. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. So uh, you touched on, you know, Dorset Council has more to do. And I suppose um, for you, why, why is a disability employee network so important as part of that progress? Thanks, Izzy. And I think, you know, for me, every employee brings something unique uh, into our workplace here in Dorset. But often those who faced and overcome some of those societal barriers due to their disability um, can have those superpowers that, you know, are a real asset uh, in the workplace. And we need to harness and to embrace um, these because, you know, as I said, I'm really proud of the employee network that, that we, the employee networks we have in Dorset Council and the disability employee network has created a really safe space and given a voice to its members so they can constructively challenge the organisation to do better where it needs to do better, um, as, you know, to celebrate successes where we've got successes. You know, we've got that culture in the organisation where we want everyone to respect and recognise the strengths and experience disabled employees can bring. You know, there's no such thing as normal. Everyone is different. Um, we all bring, you know, we bring our disabled employees together and that allows their, them to amplify their message and their impact. Uh, and, um, you know, I recognise that diversity is an asset to our organisation and everyone grows by understanding that. So, so for me, Izzy, that employee network is a catalyst for that understanding. Brilliant. I, I, I agree absolutely, Matt. You know, our, our culture is a, you know, is a key um, and, and really distinct part of, uh, of our brand identity. It's who we are. Um, and, and it's great uh, seeing mechanisms put in place so people, uh, people's strengths can really be amplified and brought to bear. Um, I'm just, just curious, how, 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 you know, how are we learning as an organisation from our disabled employees? Absolutely, absolutely. So we've talked about the community. We've talked about um, the community that we serve in Dorset, 20% of those who are, dis are disabled in some way. We continue to design and develop a service catered around those, those customers' needs, but the same applies to our employees. And the way we work has got to continue to evolve and be centred around how all of our employees want to work. So, you know, the Dorset Workplace Framework is, is our planned response to hybrid working, resulting both from the pandemic and also from the creation of a unitary council, where we, have, we were previously six councils just uh, just under three years ago and, and it's intended that that Dorset workplace accommodates all employees needs within the workplace and shows that Dorset Council truly is a modern employer of choice. So um, briefly the framework enables structured conversations between employees and teams and managers so that individuals can work in a way that best suits them while still meeting the needs of the business. I mean that's really important obviously we're here to deliver services to our customers but actually what we need to be able to do with that with is, is, is embrace that challenge and at the start of this you know, we might have had phrases like, you know, making a reasonable adjustment. We want that to be a part, part of the past. We want everyone's approach uh, and the way of working to be celebrating the unique way that they are and the, the unique things they bring into the organisation. So we know that organisations are more diverse and more successful. They're productive, they're efficient and innovative. So we're building learning and direct input from disabled employees into the way we work to benefit our both our internal and our external customers. 
Um, and I guess finally, you know, we recognise the community in place leadership we have on the people of Dorset. So learning from our own employees how to best do this in an inclusive way is, uh, is I guess, obvious really, but hopefully will help our communities as well. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, I just want to uh, echo that really, Matt. I, I think it re really is important. And the launch of uh, the employee networks, the disability employee network uh, specifically for me, is about ensuring that some of those groups that uh, can face disadvantage uh, in the workplace have a voice and can be leaders themselves as well. Um, everyone's an expert on their, their own little corner of experience and translating that into uh, collaborating to review policy, being consulted on and inputting into that work ensures that every disabled colleague, uh, their experiences, needs and the issues that affect them are at the heart of uh, our both our current and our future practices. And it's uh, it's really great to have your and the, the senior leadership teams uh, support listening and, and acting on uh, those different experiences across the council. Brilliant. So um, I think both you and I have uh, just touched on kind of uh, leadership as a quality. And I'd just be really interested to hear what you think are the characteristics, I suppose, of, of modern purposeful leadership. That's a really good question, isn't it? Thanks, Izzy, for that one. Um, you, know, we, uh, you know, we're doing some great work with leadership training as part of our people strategy. Um, you know, we want to embrace kind of a people centred, digital, future focused, inclusive approach. Uh, and intensively to focus on developing role models to lead our culture and organisational change because leadership is about role modelling. And um, that's really, really important because leaders need to inspire others. You know, they need to have those personal characteristics that others can associate with um, and uh, you know, create those spaces of psychological safety where everyone's comfortable and confident to be their whole self. You know, leaders need followers. I, you know, I joke about, you know, if you're, if you're a leader and you haven't got any followers, then you're a bit of a lonely shepherd, aren't you, really? It's about, you know, a shepherd needs sheep, don't they, in, in, in that sense. But everyone's a leader in the organisation, has potential to be a leader. This isn't just a, a title that is given to individuals. And I think that that um, what I just said there around, um, you know, uh, being, uh, being able to inspire others. I mean, we see this in the national media at the moment, don't we, with Rose on Strictly come down soon who's 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 got a you know she's she's deaf and that disability she's, she's inspiring people within the deaf community which is just absolutely amazing it's the same within workplace we need those leaders to be able to inspire others to say actually i could do that i could move forward absolutely so i think it's uh it's fair to say that you don't necessarily need a manager or leader in your uh job description or or your role title to be able to uh demonstrate leadership qualities there Totally, totally agree with that. So, listen, I've got, I've got a, I've got a question for you two now. Um, so, um, so Pete, Izzy, what, what do you think is the best part of leading the disability employee network for Dorset Council? Who great, wants to go great, first? Go on, okay, great question, Matt. Thank you. Uh, for me, you know, our, our disabled disability employee network is, um, is a group that's run by disabled people for disabled people. Um, and as 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 one of the co-leads for it, you know, I, you, you you touched on this point yourself. Uh, I, I have the opportunity uh, um, and the privilege to role model the behaviour and the and the attitude uh, that I I would like to see others uh, showcase into the into the rest of the organisation. Um, you know, I, I get immense satisfaction from from doing that and then seeing others within the group take that on and and challenge constructively and and overcome their own barriers and grow as a result so that's 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 what uh keeps me involved brilliant how about you izzy yeah i think you know i just really like to draw on everything that uh, pete has just said really i think um i'm involved in various different aspects of equality diversity and inclusion work across the council and each one of those opportunities but none more so the disability employee network has been an opportunity for me to demonstrate leadership myself and to f focus some of the superpowers that i have um into areas that i'm passionate about and I think the way in which we can bring together different voices through the network and remember that no one person is an expert on everything, um, not only empowers each individual employee and gives them opportunity to create change and demonstrate leadership, but also magnifies our impact. You know, together we are stronger uh, than we are individually and having that safe space and seeing people realise uh, that they're not on their own, that others do face uh, similar challenges to them 
um, and have similar experiences um, and that together they can you know come together and demonstrate that leadership is uh, both inspiring and essential to me. Brilliant, good answer. Great stuff. Thanks very much for your time today, Matt. Really appreciate it. I know you're you're a busy chap. So um, that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. <laughs>